second. Um, hopefully lots of people are starting to join us now. Um, it's lovely to see you and for you to be with us today. And so a little introduction, my name's Hannah and I'm from Flying Fish Studio in Sheffield and this is our second of five clay workshops. The first three are focusing on life pebbles, then we have clay dream catchers and then we have clay monsters. So this is our second week. If you couldn't join us for the first week, um, then not to worry. You can join in this one if you would like, although it's going to be a bit tricky um, because last week um, we made some of the pieces that we're going to be working on today. Um, so if you're tuning in and you haven't yet done the first workshop, you can scroll down um, ArtCore's um, Facebook page and then the workshop will be there so you can catch up on that one and then watch this one after. So um, from last week, you will have your clay pot and your pebbles. We're going to be working on the pebbles today and we're also going to be starting our clay hand. We're going to paint it next week because we need to leave it to dry, but we're actually going to make it and shape it this week. So I'll just run through the materials you'll need. If you want to pause the video at any time, you can. Also, um, if you want to comment at all, it would be really lovely to hear from you. Obviously, if you're on your parents' Facebook account, just make sure you have their permission. Um, really, really nice. Uh, sometimes I'll just lean forward just so I can actually see everyone saying hi. So it's lovely to see you. Oh, that's fab. Okay, great. If you have any questions throughout, do just um, type away and then I'll answer them as we go along. So today we'll need our clay. Hopefully you wrapped that up really well last week um, so that it's not dried out. We'll also want our greaseproof paper to stop our clay from sticking to anything. You'll want your knife, your rolling pin, a pot or a glass of water. You'll want um, a bowl, something similar to this. If you don't have one exactly the same, I'll just talk through um, the kind of bowl that would be good to use, but I'll leave that till a little bit later. We may get onto painting some of our pebbles today, so you might like um, any like acrylic paint works really well and a paintbrush. You'll also want, if you have a um, cocktail stick, that'll be useful. Let's have our cocktail stick. A pen, a pencil, and then our colours. And I think that's about it. We have a really long list of materials today. I may have missed something. Um, oh, we need textures as well, um, which I'll talk about now. Um, so we'll get out a little bit of our clay because we're going to start by making our hands. So we're going to have something like this by the end of today. Okay, a clay hand that we've made. Um, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's got a lot of um, texture on it. Okay, see if it catches the light. And so we're going to be experimenting with texture, finding things around our home that we can use to create texture, seeing what our favorite ones are, so we're just going to get like a, a scrap piece of clay and then we're going to apply that to our hand. So if we get a little bit of clay out of here, you can see I've used some since the last workshop. Okay. So again, if you've got a knife, we're just going to cut a little section off. And with air dry clay, so that it becomes nice and pliable, we need to kind of knead it a little bit in our hands. Okay, so make sure that after you've used your clay, always make sure to then um, close it again, wrap it up. 
so that it doesn't dry out because it can even dry out um, in a matter of in a matter of hours or less as soon as it starts being exposed to the air it starts to dry in one way that's amazing um, but in in some ways it's um it's a little bit uh, tricky you need to make sure you've wrapped it up really well now in terms of how big um, this piece is um, it's it's really however big you want I've got probably about the size of a tiny mini satsuma I'm going to say this week and um, this is just to practice on practice our patterning on so if you have lots of spare clay then you can do big pieces of um, patterning but yeah about about this much because I don't want to waste it we can use this for something afterwards but as soon as you've used clay one rolled it out and used it once it's a bit harder to then um, roll roll again it doesn't quite work as well the second time there tends to be more cracks in it so I'm just kneading away at this and popping it on my grease proof paper obviously make sure that um, your work surface is a space where it doesn't mind if it gets um, messy and same with your clothes we're going to get our rolling pin and just roll it out it doesn't matter for this one if it's an even thickness because this is just a little practice piece but obviously if you end up really liking your practice piece and want to um, keep it for something then it's nice if uh, you're pleased with how you started it off so I've just got a flat piece of clay here and I'm going to experiment with texture I think this is um, probably one of if not the favorite part for me because I love to experiment and um, see what I can use around the house yes yeah, so we just said um, for anyone that's just joining now um, we've got our pieces from last week and we're just creating um, textures now for our hand, practicing textures. So I rolled out some clay and now I'm going to find anything around the house so you may want to just nip off. Um, I'm just going to be experimenting with textures now for the next few minutes. So you can really get anything you like. I've got pens here, just like when we experimented a little bit last week. If I pop my pen lid in here, it creates a really lovely, lovely texture. You don't even need to buy stamps for these. You can find things around your home. Obviously, um, if if it so happens that. Um, you find something with a really nice texture but you don't really want to get clay on it then I wouldn't use it and um, so do make sure you're allowed to use whatever you create texture with and um, so we've got pen, pen lids so you can experiment with textures on here seeing what you like the amount of clay um, that I'm using just in answer to your question is um, it's just it's just however much about about this much we're just practicing textures right now okay great so uh, you could use a cocktail stick so you could create textures using a cocktail stick so I'm just going just drawing lines in mine okay creating another texture what else can you find if anyone has anything um, that they found around their home which they think oh my goodness this is an amazing texture or even just a good texture an all right texture it's um it'll be really nice to hear from you and um, if i have it in my room i'm going to try it as well um, i've got paper clips so you can push paper clips in to create texture as well that's quite nice you could line lots of those up so we're creating textures here to then put onto the hand that we're going to create in a second. The reason why we don't create the hand and then think about textures and then put the texture on the hand is because by the time you've experimented, it will um, it might have dried out already. Oh, so some of these oh a mini Rubik's cube. Ah, oh, that's really cool. 
Oh, I'd love, I'd really love to experiment with a mini Rubik's Cube. That's really cool. And what else have we got? Oh, we've got a pencil sharpener. So I'm just going to... Ooh, ooh, I like that. <laughs> so at the moment, these are the kind of texts. You can see the paper clips quite vividly on there as well. It's just experimenting anything around. We can use our hands, so we could use our fingernails to create texture. We might want to do lines using your fingernail really close together or further apart. Uh, where is it? Up here. So really close together or further apart. Or you could use the knife, yes! So you could use the knife. Um, I wonder how you could use the knife. You could do something like this. That creates some nice circles. Or you could actually really get a lot of control using just cutting into that clay a little bit. What else have we got? Oh, fantastic! We've got broccoli! <laughs> What else have we got? The end of a notebook where the pencil goes. Ooh, that sounds interesting. And then we've got cutters as well, so like um, clay cutters. Oh, wow, fantastic. What else do we have? Ooh, I've never tried this, but I've got a piece of cling film here. I'm going to see if I push this into, if I scrumple it up a little bit and push it in, I'm going to see if that creates any texture. Creates a very little, but it does create a tiny bit. So you've got to be careful not to squish the clay down too much though. What else have we got? Oh, there's the side of here as well. That creates a really nice pattern. What else do we have? Yeah, cookie cutters, fab. Yeah, different parts of like a cookie cutter as well, the bumpy bit or the straight bit. Um, what else have we got? Oh, uh, do, do, do. Hmm. Oh, I've got a pack of acrylic paints here. I might see what the top of those is like as well. It's got a little indent on the top, so I'm gonna. Oh, that's really cool. I really like that. <laughs> these four here. Okay. The end of a paintbrush, yes. A leaf. Oh, fantastic. This is so fun. Great. So, after um, you've experimented with this, and keep experimenting and just um, keep a, a, an, ear, an ear open um, for what we're doing next, Leaves make a really nice pattern, yes, yeah, so if you're, if you're able to access some outdoor space and get some leaves, I bet that would be really, really gorgeous. We've got tape as well, we've got another Rubik's Cube, fantastic. Okay, so what we're going to do now is get some clay and we'll need... If you have like a big block like mine, you'll probably want about a third of the entire one. So probably, you probably want about half of what you've got if you haven't used any from last week. So I'll show you um, how much you'll want. Depends how big your hands are as well. Because we're going to be shaping it around our own hand. Of course, if you'd prefer to use um, another hand, someone else is in your family, then uh, you can grab them for this. So we'll need about this much. Okay, it's a fair chunk, fair chunk here. Thankfully, I've wrapped mine up really well, so it's uh, not dried out at all. 
and I'm just going to start kneading it. You can knead it on here if you prefer. I'm going to do it on to my table because I don't mind if my table gets a bit mucky because it's in an art studio, so it's okay. Yeah, that's great. If you'd rather, if you'd rather watch it, then um, that's fab. You might get inspiration as well, even if you're not doing it. Okay, so I'm just really kneading that away, and then I'm going to roll it out. So for this, it is important that we get an even thickness. So I'm going to get my rolling pin. If you if you're finding it hard to roll the clay, you can stand up and then you can push down with more pressure. So let's roll this out. We don't want it too long one way and thin because it's going to have to fit your hand on. So if you're thinking it's getting quite long one way, you can turn it over roll it the other way, check if it fits your hand, it does actually, I want mine a bit thinner so I'm just going to roll it out a little bit, little bit more, obviously the thicker your clay hand is the longer it will take to dry, but we have got a week till our next workshop so it's plenty of time, it should just take a couple of days. I'm just having a look, it's about even thickness. Okay. Next what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, pop my hand on the clay. Now if you're wanting it in this kind of style, you can see the fingers are um, close together, they're not open, they're closed like this, almost like you're receiving something or giving something. Remember that these um, life pebbles are a really nice way of opening up conversations um, about our days. So we're going to be talking a little bit more about that um, a bit later in this workshop and the symbols that we might like to use in our pebbles. But that's why here we've got it, we've got it closed. But you can have it open if you want. Okay? So um, Popping my hand on like this, and I'm actually going to draw around it with a cocktail stick. I'm not going to start cutting out with my knife because otherwise I might hurt myself. I'm just using a cocktail stick, or you could even use a pencil just to make a mark all the way around your hand. In terms of the bottom, it's a rather than just cutting it off at the thumb along there, I've still got this section here that I then curved around. So I'm popping my fingers together, depending on what you find easiest to draw around, it can be either hand. And then I'm just carefully making a mark all the way around with my cocktail stick. So just making sure I'm going about in line with my fingers. Sometimes you um, you can fit these under a little bit, but then you'll have really thin fingers. So try and just do it in line with, like if you're looking from above, you can only just see the line. I'm not actually cutting through it at this point. I'm just making a mark the where I'm then going to cut. Okay. You leave yours down there. I'm just going to pick mine up so you can see. And then I'm just going to close it off at the bottom. If you want to make the fingers more defined, then you can. You can just um, lower these top bits here 
where the fingers join, you can just make them a little bit lower and have a little gap in between if you'd like that. Okay, lovely. Hopefully we're all okay with that. If anyone has any questions, do just let me know. Okay, I'm then going to use my knife. It's not a very sharp knife, this one. We don't need a sharp knife um, for this project. And what we're going to do is we're just going to cut around where you've made your line. You're going to now cut out your hand. So I'm just dragging it through. I'm not going back and forth. I'm just dragging it through the clay. Now instead of, especially when you've got like a corner to go around, that can be the trickiest part. Straight lines are okay, corners are a little bit trickier. So what I tend to do is, I'm just going to do it and then hold it up and show you. So here, instead of curving around with my knife, I just went straight down. Okay, the next bit I'm going to do, because curves are quite hard to cut, I'm then going to go along there. So the next cut, just to make it a bit easier for myself, I'm then going to cut along here and then along here. So you get off the, um, the excess clay little by little rather than trying to do it all in, in one go. You can see what you find easiest, it's just, it's just how I find it. It's easier for me. Okay, so this is your excess clay that you don't need. I'm just going to go around it. We will be smoothing the edges down in a little bit. So not to worry if they're a bit rough or jaggedy at the moment. Okay. I'm just going around, cutting out my hand. It might be a nice thing as well if, if uh, you have spare clay and other members of your family want to do one as well. You have lots of hands. You could even use them for different purposes, not just for the life pebbles, but for whatever you like. Okay, so just cutting my sections out. Sometimes you, rather than doing long bits, you might just want to do a few little cuts, especially around those fingers where it's a really tight curve. Just making a few marks around. Hopefully it's going all right for you. You can be, whilst doing this, you can be thinking of what textures um, you'd like to put on yours. Oh, I'm so pleased you love yours. That's great to hear. Okay, remember this is your, probably your first time um, doing this with the textures, etc. So if it doesn't work out exactly how you like the first time, don't worry. Often with art, it's something that you just need to keep going with, keep practicing, keep experimenting. Okay. Cutting out a little bit more. Once you've done your hand, and not to worry if you haven't done it yet, um, we're then going to get in some water. Oh, first of all, with this clay here, again, we don't want to waste it. Um, clay's not mega cheap so you know we don't want to waste it and also for the environment we don't want to waste it and um, so you can just um, squidge it back up again and then you can wrap it in cling film you can even add a few sprinklings of water just to stop it from drying out if you add a few sprinklings it really is just a little bit it's not much so I've got some cling film here so I'm just going to wrap it up. 
really nice and tight. Then I will put it in a plastic bag after this workshop. Okay. So, once I've cut out my hand, some water, and then you're going to smooth over the edges. Because at the moment, they'll probably be quite rough. So I'm just, you don't need much water at all. I remember something I mentioned last week, if you use loads and loads of water, your clay is more likely to crack. So just um, be quite um, sparse with the water, don't do too much, so just slightly damp finger. And then I'm just going around, smoothing it all down. Thank you, sure. That's how I like it. This stage here makes such a difference to your finished piece. If you've got it all smooth, it makes a real difference to the whole appearance of it. It's also, I find, a really satisfying process, just going around, feeling the texture of the clay as well. Really nice to, to use this material like this, smoothing it down. Did anyone have a texture that they think, oh, I'm definitely going to use this on my piece? For me, I really liked, um, which one? Oh yes, I really liked the acrylic paint tops. That created a really nice circle. So I might do lots of different, different circles on my one. Um, it'd be lovely to hear if any announcements to share what they're thinking of doing. For some sections, um, you may want to use your cocktail stick to get in between if you're finding it hard to access, especially if you've got like um, thing, the fingers with gaps in between, you can use your cocktail stick to just get out any excess clay. Lovely. So now mine's nice and smooth. Do keep going if yours is not quite there yet. Oh, so we've got broccoli. Fantastic. Bumpy side of the knife. Oh, the pattern, like a pendant that's patterned. Yeah. Fab. So once we've got our piece, you may like to lift it up a little bit and just smooth over some of the bottom as well. Just those edges. And then we're going to create our patterns. So it's getting the patterns that um, you would like. And then thinking about how you want to design your piece. Um, so it may be, if anyone's heard of like a mandala style where you start in the middle and then work outwards with lots of patterns, that can be really nice. Or you could just do straight lines or diagonal or totally random, um, whatever you choose to do. So I think I might do kind of mandala style for mine. So I'm going to start with a circle in and then I'm going to work outwards, but you do whatever you would like. So I'm starting in the centre. Once you've made an indent in there, it is possible to get some water and kind of rub it out, but it won't be as smooth the top of your clay. So if that does happen and you want to change it, you can get a bit of water and kind of smooth it out. You need very little water to do that. Um, or you can think, okay, it's not exactly where I wanted it on the clay, um, but I'm going to work with it. Um, so yeah. I, I wouldn't go straight for trying to, to rub it out because it doesn't create a completely smooth surface once you have tried to erase something. I quite like the paper clip. 
and you can use some paint if you like. You could use different angles of your pieces as well. So say instead of using the whole paper clip, you could just use the end. Yes, we have using pebbles as well. Yeah. There's so many th more things than you'd expect that can create lovely, lovely patterns. Could even be a bit of a guessing game for your family. You could show them your piece and you'd be like, okay, what do you reckon this is? And then they might be able to, to guess or not guess what it is. And that'd be quite a fun game to do. I'm going to use someone else's idea of the tip of the paintbrush. Oh, it creates a really nice small dot. Thank you for suggesting that. <laughs> Lovely, I love workshops where we can all share ideas as well. And if you're accessing this after the live workshop, um, you can still share your ideas in the comments. It'd be lovely to hear from you. Okay. So at the moment, this is the that I've got, lots of different circles. If you'd like to send a, a photograph of your piece in after this workshop um, and your parents are okay with that, then, um, then it would be lovely to see them. Just because it gives everyone else lots of inspiration. Everyone has such unique ideas. And it's great when we share them. I think um, at one point I'm definitely going to try broccoli. <laughs> That's a wonderful idea. Oh, we've got a fork as well. Yeah, that, that creates a really nice indent. Let's see if I, need, I have anything else on my craft shelves. Oh, I have a embroidery thread wheel. I'm going to try that as well. Oh wow, big circles, I like them though. Okay. I'll just keep holding it up, not that you want to do anything at all similar, but just sometimes nice to see other people's work. So it feels like we're together. And, ooh, what else? Mmm. Oh, I've got a little quilling tool here. It's what you use for rolling paper. I'm going to try this. Oh, it creates tiny, weeny little dots. You could do some really delicate work with this one. Okay, so after I've finished these dots here in a, in a minute or so, I'll go on to the next part of our workshop today, just so we don't run out of time. But you do carry on experimenting with your textures if you would like to. Oh, fantastic, yeah. <laughs> Quilling tools are a, are a nice one to, to use. I'm just working my way around. Okay. I'm going to finish there for mine, just so I can show you what we do next, but do carry on with that and you can always recap this video afterwards. So now I've finished um, my patterning, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to get um, my plastic bowl. If you use this for water, just make sure um, that's all emptied and um, make sure it's not, not too wet in there anymore. 
we won't need our water anymore for today. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to carefully lift our hand up and we're going to pop it inside our bowl. Depending on the bowl that you have, it may be that you'd like, um, like some cling film just to pop underneath and then pop your hand on top. That just stops the clay from sticking to the bowl. This type of bowl is absolutely fine though to you, so I'm just going to put it straight in here. Make sure I've positioned it where I would like. And I'm going to just, I'm going to push down so I get that really nice curve. If you're wanting not quite as much of a curve, then it may be that you want to get a shallower bowl, or if you want a really big curve, then if you get um, a bowl with deeper, deeper sides and narrower, then you can do that. So I'm just pushing it in. Okay, so I've got my hand in here, and then I'm just going to leave that to dry. Okay, so we've now finished that. It's now going on to illustrating our pebbles. So I showed a few of these last week. So we can illustrate these however we would like to, with our own symbols. So lots of different ones here. We can even paint them gold and then put our symbols on the top. So if you're wanting to paint them gold, do that now. If you're using gold paint, often gold paint needs a couple of layers. My one does. Um, so you can paint it in gold, leave it to dry, come back after a few hours, or even you can leave it a few days if you want, and then do another layer so it's a nice, rich, shiny gold colour. So if you want to paint them, do that before this next part, because we're illustrating our pebbles now. Okay. So, for example, the heart could be, um, could be someone or something that you love. If I did like a sunset, it could symbolise to me new hopes, um, new beginnings, something that's come into my life that's been good. It could symbolise nature. There's so many different um, symbols that can be used and interpreted in different ways. So I've got certain symbols like the sunrise, the heart, the eye with a tear for when we want to talk about things that have um, happened that have been sad. So you can choose what symbols you would like. It may be that you'd like to sketch it out onto some scrap paper first. We're going to actually be making our um, diagram, our little symbol sheets. We're going to be making this next week. So I've got the symbol along with what it kind of stands for. We're going to be leaving that for next week. We're just illustrating these this week. So I'm going to draw it nice and big on here so you can see as an example. And we're going to be illustrating them with our um, colour just felt tip pens. So we've got a question, if we do the paint, do we wait for it to dry before we have the drawings? Yes, yeah, we wait for it to dry. And um, so you won't be doing the drawing today if you're wanting to paint it first. Do be aware that depending on what colour of paint you use, it may be harder for certain colours to then show up on here. Um, so I've tended to just do mine straight onto the clay pebbles because next week I'll be showing you how to use PVA glue to give it like a shiny finish. So it's up to you whether you want to do paint. You might want to paint a, a few, a draw on them and then see if you like that or whether you're wanting to leave them, all, um, leave them plain before you do them all. So you might like to experiment with what you prefer. Make this really personal to you as well. So if you have a favourite colour, if the people in your family have a favourite colour, maybe um, ask them what they would, um, what they would like um, a, a stone colour to be. Um, make up your own symbols as well. So it might be that um, you have one of your 
um, animal, like a pet animal. Um, so you might want to draw like a little cat. Um, a lot of these, if you draw them on here first, it'll mean that, because um, you can't rub off on clay, if they go wrong, you can just do it again on paper. So, for example, I'm going to do a sprig as one of mine. Okay, and for me, this symbolises hope. Okay, so if I'm sat around with my family, if this is what you'd like to use it for, of course, and um, sit around with my family, and we have the hand and the stones in the middle of our table, maybe at dinner time. Okay. And then it might be that we each go round and uh, choose a piece. And so I might choose the heart and then pop that in the middle. And I might say something that I really love today. So it might be um, that I've danced in the living room and I really enjoyed that, which I do, I do do. <laughs> I love dancing. And so that might be something that I'm really grateful and that I love doing um, today. So I might put that in and then we could pass it round. If you have any other ideas of how this can be used, then it'd be lovely if you could share them as well. So I'm just doing some sketches of the symbols that I want. And then after I've done my ideas on my piece of paper, I'm then going to choose whichever colour pen I'd like. Make sure they're not too thick, your pens, because the pebbles are only tiny. I'm going to get one of my plain pebbles and then I'm going to draw um, my symbol here. This will take a lot longer than this session because we've only got a couple of minutes left so it's something that you might like to either um, do more of tonight or think about your symbols throughout the week. You might even like to discuss it as a family. The lovely thing is as well you can always make more symbols so if you think of things later you can then add them to your life pebble set. So I'm going to draw a sprig of green on my life pebble. And then next week I'll be drawing this again on a piece of card and writing next to it hope, because for me it symbolises hope whenever I pick this life pebble up. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to carry on and um, doing lots more of these and then I'm um, going to leave them to the side. Next week we'll be using our PVA glue if we want to make them shiny and um, remember if you're wanting to paint them, um, paint them but then leave them a little bit before you're um, drawing on top. And yes, so next week um, I am really looking forward to finishing um, our hand. We're going to paint it um, I'm going to probably use some gold paint, but you can use whatever you'd like. Um, yes, the question, can we paint the pinch pots? Absolutely. Um, that's something that you can, of course, do during this week, or I'm going to talk a little bit about it next week um, when, we, when we do this. But by all means, if you want to paint the pinch pot, yes, you can do whatever you like um, with these pieces. You really can. Um, so yes, I hope you've enjoyed. Um, I look forward to seeing you next week at the same time of 4.45 for our third clay workshop and this will be the last um, one of our Life Pebbles workshop. If you have any questions, do just uh, feel free to comment and I'll get back to you. So yes, I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you next week. Bye!